neurofibromatosis is the topic and this disorder essentially can cause a lot of uh, various uh, benign and malignant tumors so we'll break it down into two there's neurofibromatosis 1 and neurofibromatosis 2 uh, this one is the most prevalent and what happens is uh, neurofibromatosis usually presents with cutaneous uh, manifestations we'll talk a little bit about that uh, later whereas neurofibromatosis is more uh, of um, a CNS a central nervous system type uh, tumors and the most common of which are tumors called acoustic neuromas which can uh, lead to deafness but very quickly wanted to show you that there's two types and most clinical vignettes will talk about neurofibromatosis type 1 some sort of skin uh, condition now the tumors are break in, broken up into two categories there's peripheral uh, tumors and t central tumors the peripheral tumors involve the peripheral nerves and the peripheral nerves are also known as uh, uh, neurofibromas and basically peripheral nerves are any nerves outside of the brain or spinal cord the central tumors involved the central nervous system which is the brain and spinal cord now it's important to uh, talk about uh, the different types of tumors and the different types of tumors first we'll talk about the peripheral tumors and like I mentioned those are called neurofibromas and the most common by far are the cutaneous ones and that's really the ones that I really wanted to mention and what happens with these cutaneous uh, neurofibromas is that they induce hyperpigmentation of the overlying skin and that gives a very characteristic uh, look to uh, these uh, skin lesions and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that a little bit later they're about they're brown macules and they're very characteristic and this happens most commonly in neurofibromatosis type 1 now the next type that I wanted to discuss is the central tumors and the central tumors there's two that I really wanted to touch base on the first one is astrocytomas and what these do is that they can compress the optic nerve this can lead to blindness and this is commonly uh, seen in neurofibromatosis type 1 the next type of central tumor is the very important one because it's the primary main thing that happens in neurofibromatosis type 2 and it's called an acoustic neuroma it can compress the central uh, cranial nerve 8 and that can cause deafness so that's very important so now let's get into neurofibromatosis in terms of symptoms well on licensing exams the most common symptoms that they'll show for neurofibromatosis type 1 are the skin lesions and there's a very key term that they use it's called cafe au lait it's very important to remember that and these are spots or macules that are brown medium brown color and they can appear on the body usually on the trunk or many other places neurofibromatosis type 2 um, the most common uh, symptom that you'll see on a licensing exam is hearing loss and that is due to the acoustic neuromas that I previously uh, mentioned and these acoustic neuromas basically can compress cranial nerve 8 and that's why they can lead uh, to deafness 
Uh, diagnosis, well, it's really just a clinical diagnosis. The only type of testing you could do is an MRI or CT to uh, detect the CNS tumors. And in terms of treatment, unfortunately, there's no treatment. The only treatment involved is really the surgery uh, and the radiation uh, that you will need to do to uh, uh, to treat the tumors. But there's no actual cure or anything like that. So let's take a look at a couple of clinical vignettes. An eight-year-old boy presents to the physician for a routine health maintenance visit. His mother states that he has had difficulty reading and concentrating in his second grade class. On examination, seven cafe au lait spots on his body, as well as two small soft masses above his orbit, are seen. He has axillary freckling. His mother also has cafe au lait spots on her arms. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, fortunately, this buzzword uh, tends to only be associated with neurofibromatosis. So that's the answer here. Um, sometimes also in clinical vignettes, they'll show you a picture of these. And uh, I encourage you to look those up um, online. And finally, physical exam of a 14-year-old boy demonstrates six coffee-colored skin macules up to three centimeters in diameter. No other skin lesions are noted, but a small mass lesion is felt in the subcutaneous tissues below two of the macules. These masses are most likely closely associated with the following structures. Well, in neurofibromatosis, you essentially have two types of tumors. You have central and you have peripheral. And the peripheral ones are basically mostly cutaneous. Cutaneous or subcutaneous. Cutaneous, subcutaneous. And what that does is it induces a hyperpigmentation and that hyperpigmentation is seen as these coffee colored skin macules also known as cafe au lait spots and they involve the peripheral nerves and that would be choice C.